Hi friends! Today we are covering House Labs by Lady Gaga. My personal relationship with Lady Gaga is the fact that I'm a fan. I had the pleasure of attending her Monster Ball workshop years ago in New York City's Rockefeller Center. I went with my friend Michael. That was a lot of fun. And also my discovery of Lady Gaga occurred one night when I was watching, I think it might have still been MTV at that point. I saw Just Dance and when I looked up the artist Lady Gaga because I never heard of her at the time, I saw that it was Stephanie Germanata who attended the same high school that I went to. Stephanie was in a grade below me and I was in a grade above and we attended the same dance class for extracurricular activities and I just remember how she loved to dance to Britney Spears and when I did a talent show dancing to Mariah Carey's Heartbreaker, that was a blast. Her and her mom were so kind in complimenting me and how well I did and I should be a dancer professionally and I have to say that experience in high school was the catalyst for me to apply for a dance degree at Fordham. Ooh, that was hard. And I remember Stephanie had played a song on the piano and sang it, and it was called Kisses for Quarters, and she was the lead in a lot of the musicals, so the background was there in terms of musicianship and singing and songwriting, and it was insane to see that she succeeded in becoming the artist that she is today, not only in the music realm, but now as we've seen in the film industry with A Star is Born, okay? And if it's your first time here, hi, Melicia. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. So when I first saw that Lady Gaga was releasing makeup back, I believe it was 2019, only available through the Amazon platform, which I thought was a strange launch, but whatever. I didn't buy anything because I didn't find anything to be of particular interest to me at the time. And then she had released an eyeshadow palette and I remember that because she went on Nikki Tutorial's channel. Nikki Tutorials did Lady Gaga's makeup and that was great for her. And upon encountering information about this reboot, so definitely the same brand, but I think there are changes not only in the formula obviously, but in the packaging and the items that are included in this launch. But what spoke to me was the bronzers and the highlights for sure because it just seemed from the range of shades in both products was just immense and impressive for an initial launch. So I pulled up Vanity Fair's article here and this is written by Laura Regensdorf. If you would like to read this article as well, I will include the link down below in the description box. Gaga of Mother Reinvention is talking through the debut of her retooled makeup line House Labs by Lady Gaga. House Labs is currently available on Sephora.com as well as HouseLabs.com if you wish to order directly from the brand sites. And House Labs has Sephora's clean stamp, which, you know, people like to look for. Not particularly important for me, but I understand, you know, where we are with clean beauty and all that, the, the importance of it. Lady Gaga says, from the very beginning, I've always wanted this company to empower people to unlock the artists within them. Looking back on her brand's 1.0 launch in the fall of 2019, she drew inspiration from drugstore beauty staples, a democratizing influence reflected in approachable Amazon pricing and from her own stage tested kit. I decided that I wanted to make supercharged clean artistry makeup. Gaga says that the new house labs focus on beneficial ingredients and color payoff. And I didn't get the power pigments because just from a practical standpoint I have so many of Danessa's color fixes that I haven't even used yet. So that was just a red flag for me in terms of uh, are you really going to use these if you haven't even used Danessa's? Really, Alicia? Come on. But interesting to know that this was influenced by her applause video that released in 2013. Love that track and video. Gaga says that she always loved working with paints, but a lot of paints are very dirty and not good for your skin. I guess dirty meaning she felt like they irritated her or, or something, something. So the power pigment formula is boosted with plantarized squalene and hyaluronic acid. Great to know if you're into pigments, but if you want a, a product that has more of a skincare sensibility, then there you go. Getting into the Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter. I love that name. Talc Free 10 Shades and the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer 12 Shades. Yes. And Lady Gaga's insistence in including Arnica into the formulas is from her experience with fibromyalgia and chronic pain where she had used a lot of arnica just to ease the discomfort and thought why not maybe the arnica will have similar anti-inflammatory benefits if found in a makeup item so there you go i don't have the la monster lip crayon but the shimmering fuchsia shade from the 12 mattes that are included in the line is inspired by gaga's fuchsia lip look in her telephone video in 2010 
perhaps because of that influence, I will buy that color because I love that video. So that is some context surrounding the brand. If it's your first time encountering House Labs, if you don't even know Lady Gaga, hopefully that will give you a little perspective on the products and why Lady Gaga formulated, created, was at the helm, so to speak, in deciding to launch the reboot with these products. Starting off with the Bioradiant Gel Powder Formula with Fermented Arnica, okay? These highlighters retail for $40, so a little more on the expense expensive side like I think a little higher than mid mid I would consider like the urban decays of the world 10 shades for highlighter and what appealed to me the most is the like these pinkish kind of tangerine sunrise colors for highlighter so I picked up fire opal which what is also the name of our beloved astral shade found in Mother's Bronze Seduction and Mothership 5. You know I had to mention that. I almost got Rose Quartz because it looks absolutely beautiful. It's described to be a light magenta, but I decided to go with Peach Quartz. Uh, Golden Peach, I thought that was maybe a little more practical because since I got Fire Opal, like the fun highlighter, and then Peach Quartz is the everyday highlighter, there are still shades in this lineup that are holding on to my interest tightly, but I'm trying to just hold back a little bit and, and be happy with the two that I bought. Again, $40, 10 shades, uh, suggested shelf life of 18 months, and these highlighters are made in Italy. And I quite like the packaging, it's minimalist in nature. You have the name of the product here and the ingredients on this side. If any of you want me to post the, the photo here of the ingredient label, on the community board, I'll be happy to do so. Here is the packaging. You have a magnetic closure for the compact and this unicorn skin overlay, which I think lovely and beautifully represents what this highlighter is about, it being bioradiant and all. And here we have fire opal. You have the House Labs logo here embossed. And I think you can successfully detect just the the radiance and the shine of this highlighter. It is a gel to powder formula, which I favor over pressed powders. There are a lot of pressed powder highlighters on the market that are superb, but when it comes to this type of a texture, I think not only do you get smoothness, but you get a little extra like zing, okay? <laughs> We're not finished. So here we have again, Fire Opal. I mean, look at that shine already. And I adore this. Oh my goodness. You see, it's like a fiery coral base with a gold flip. And I applied this yesterday lower on the cheeks as a topper. And man, I'm, I'm thrilled that I decided to go with Fire Opal. I didn't want to go with like the champagne -y shades because I have plenty of those. While I understand the formula might deliver a different experience, even though the shade is the same to what I already have in my collection, Again, I try to hold back, but ooh, it is so beautiful. And next we have Peach Quartz, which is a golden peach. I had to get, and peachy anything for me, I think just is, it's just lovely. So you see, maybe not as like pow wow in terms of color, like Fire Opal, but man, does it still deliver that intense shine. Look at that. And I know it's hard to see on camera, but there is just a beautiful twinkle that occurs when you expose these formulas to harsh light. So I don't know if you can see that as I roll the swatch up, just like that gleaming effect that when applied on the skin, it doesn't look chunky or overly textured. When it's buffed in, just a beautiful finish is left behind. So those are the highlighters. Now for the bronzer. The bronzer I was rather excited for because the I think the highlighters would be the, the hit out of the entire line, but I was enthusiastic about the bronzers because you got 12 shades and they come in just this beautiful velvet, well, let me read the description so I don't mess it up. To quickly go over the details, the bronzers retail for $38. Uh, the official name is the Power Sculpt Velvet Bronzer with Fermented Arnica. I purchased medium level seven. We're looking at 12 grams of product. The highlighter has 8.5 grams and the bronzer suggested shelf life is 24 months, the highlighter 18. So we got a little shorter lifespan for the highlighter. And bronzers are also made in 
Italy. I was tossing back and forth between six and seven, but I decided to go with seven based on the video that's on Sephora. And I have to say, uh, shout out to the brand for including all types of not only skin tones, but skin types and textures, young, mature types of skin, just a variety and diverse presentation of different types of people who still want to wear makeup no matter their age or their skin type or their skin tone and color and undertone. I think it's fantastic. So based on the video I saw about the bronzer swatches i thought six might have been fine but not robust enough for what i wanted in the bronzer so here is the compact similar design you still have the magnetic closure around the compact this beautiful mirrored copper chrome finish but then you have like this rubberized top which I get it, maybe they wanted the rubberized matte top to represent the matte bronzer and maybe it would have been too closely related to Danessa's, hold on, Danessa's Bomb Contour packaging, but kind of would have loved if this was also the copper mirrored, kind of shiny shiny on the, on the top too, or maybe like a brushed finish all around. Anyway, 12 shades in all. Again, I have medium level seven and this is medium to medium deep warm rosy undertones. The warm rosy got me, let me tell you. And this is just super smooth. Here you go with the swatch. And I just love the color of this bronzer. It's brown, but again, a little bit of that rosiness that I described in my terracotta video, how I love bronzers, but to have a shade that just pulls in both like the clay and adobe brown shades and to have it as one and lastly we have the lip oil this retails for 24 dollars i purchased this shade in secondary sheer orange 12 month expiration made in the usa you get seven milliliters or 0.25 fluid ounces of product lightweight hydration and a non-sticky shine that is correct i applied this last night and it really just gives that slickness and comfort right away and the tint that is included i think lovely for everyday wear here's the actual component pretty modest in packaging you have the silver chrome cap a rather large doe foot applicator is very round at the tip and again sheer orange i thought was just a perfect tint of a shade to wear on me every day and it just has great slide amino acids prickly pear oil i thought i detected some sort of like a tingling but that could be in my head i don't know for sure if it's in there but it doesn't sting and it doesn't have like a strong smell there's no minty whatever or vanilla something it's just a great solid lip oil which i don't actually use a lot of so this is just nice to have in the bag for an emergency. If you don't have lipstick, if you don't have lip gloss, you have that. It's gonna work out just fine. With product details and swatches out the way, I think it's time for you to come in a little closer. <gasps> That's enough. You might see there are different colors on my face. Yes, because on this side, I applied NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in the shade Syracuse. And on this side, Danessa's Blurring Balm Powder in shade six. The tool for the bronzer I'll use is the Hokuro Nagi NF1 Powder Brush. This is a mixture, I believe of, let me double check, Gray Squirrel and Sokoho Goat. So a great combination for blend and pick up. It's round, which I think perfect to just drop this shade accurately into the hollows of the cheeks. Bam, bam, bam. Taking the Velvet Powder Bronzer. So we got nice pick up from the go. And I forgot to show you, great mirror. This is a fantastic compact to bring along for the ride. And as you can see, and what I saw yesterday as well, is just, as you see the pickup, but it just fuses with your skin in a flash. There's like zero time, it's negative time for blending. And I think the color just wraps the skin well. In terms of the shade, I love the hue. Very happy I went with seven. I think I could have built up six, but again, I wanted something a little more with a little more punch in the, in not only the color, but the undertone. Going in on this side, I think this bronzer is pretty foolproof in terms of application. And again, I just love the seamless blend and air light texture this blender presents in it just being virtually foolproof to apply. So if you have trouble with bronzer, I don't think you'll have any issues with a House Labs bronzer formula. It is incredible, just to say the least. No fragrance, okay? We don't have to deal with any of that stuff. The texture is undetectable. I don't think you can tell I applied a powder. You might think this was a cream. 
I don't know. And it's not completely matte. There is a little bit of a sheen and I did not set my NARS foundation. So that's something to consider and maybe a perk if you have dry skin and you don't like to use powder products because they might look too, too dry and textured on your cheeks. But man, this is incredible in terms of how well it blends into the skin and does not leave just like that overly powdered bronzer you you know what i'm talking about where too much has been applied you could just see that overly obvious streak of bronzer and it looks muddy right this does not take on any of those attributes whatsoever incredible incredible i was highly impressed yesterday when i just slapped this on because my package arrived yesterday and i just wanted to try right away and applying it again today marvelous now going in with fire opal this is again a gel to powder texture great pickup using my tonsido brush because i love the angle and to buff it in in this manner just tapping off a little excess and as i mentioned before fire opal going a little lower on my cheeks so this color is going to give a little more of like that tangerine hue but you can just see the sparkle here. Now there is a little bit of, it's not glitter. I believe this is mostly mica and perhaps another type of a, of a material that gives a little bit of that twinkle effect, but again, without making the skin look textured. So I'm not sure if that's for you, but man, I do love a little bit of a twinkle in my highlighter. I have other highlighters on standby to make comparisons with, but it's a nice escape from just your glow type of a highlighter or just shiny or metallic. This has a beautiful multi-pearl effect that I think forgivable on multiple skin conditions, especially because you have the option to buff it in well into the skin. And if you want it, I have Sonia G's Buffer Pro on standby. You could just take this brush and buff it further into the skin. Now keep in mind, there is apparent like gold flex in Fire Opal specifically because I only have these two shades. I can only speak to them. I'm not sure if the other shades have a more conservative delivery of the twinkle effects. Let's go to Peach Quartz, which I like to apply higher on the cheekbones. And man, combined with Fire Opal, I think this is a great combination. There was a champagne shade that I almost bought, but I went with Peach Quartz because I thought just like that slightly different undertone rather than the champagne gold, which I usually go for, would be a nice escape. And combined with Fire Opal, I think just the perfect gradient going from something lighter into that more coral orangey hue. These are fantastic formulas. What else can I say? I think this is a successful reboot. Granted, just telling by the products I purchased. I didn't buy the entirety of the launch. I probably not buying the pigments, maybe one or two down the line and perhaps one of the monster crayons. And I'm sure House Labs has a lot of other complexion products in the works, right? We definitely might be seeing some foundation and concealer from this brand, but great to start off with highlighter and bronzer. I think it was a great way to go and I adore both. I'm very happy that I purchased these and I was conservative with this buy simply because I bought three blushes from Pat McGrath's duo, Divine Blush Duo release, as well as one highlighter. And you know, it's just, I was like, just dial it down a little bit, Alicia. Let's go into a few comparisons. I wanted to start off with the Say Bronzer, which I know it's a cream, but I think this will be a great base shade to apply under House Lab shade. So you see this has a little more of like a ruddiness to it, which I like. I like a little bit of that slightly burnt tone. Yes, I always talk about it. Also to be present in my bronzer, I do think that accurately mimics what happens when your skin gets tan. It has a little bit of that reddish tint. LYS is No Limit Matte Bronzer. This is in Harmony Medium my all-time favorite for a very long time. I can't get over the silkiness of this powder. Compared to House Labs, let's see. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. They're both very smooth, but House Labs, there's a little more creaminess to, to it. I don't know if you can tell. So this is LYS, the bottom is House Labs. You can see there's more of an apparent sheen there 
from the house labs and here let's do a swatch on the back of my hand so here you have lys here you have house labs there's definitely more of a powdery finish to the lys bronzer and it is a pressed powder matte bronzer right so maybe more advantageous if you're normal to oily or combination and if you're on the drier part of the skin spectrum you're not crazy about cream bronzer but this could be a possibility then i think you should consider the power sculpt because it's an incredible texture very creamy in the pan and as you saw just seamlessly smooth on the blend here's mario soft sculpt bronzer i have medium dark and dark these again are pressed powder bronzers so just looking at the similarities in color definitely similar in color more of an apparent again powderiness to the formula granted that it is a powder bronzer that's the dark shade from mario's line definitely a little more orange in undertone now the color i wanted to look for was goa from the shantikai bronzer line goa definitely has more of a red undertone to it which i love but for the life of me i could not find it so here is sirena which is more golden in undertone and i think goa would have been a closer resemblance to medium level seven and in terms of the difference the shantikai bronzer is more of like a true gel to powder formula whereas the power sculpt i think more of a hybrid so yes gel to powder but more on the powder side is an interesting formula but that's why i think it's incredible to blend it just looks lovely on the skin now for the highlighters the ones i thought about were mel cosmetics the digital dust highlighters i have pink moon let's see phoenix and genesis this has the same vibe i think as the bio radiant highlighter so again this is phoenix such an interesting color i'll swatch it on this side it has like that similar high shine effect but compared to the bio radiant i feel like i don't think the digital dust has the same like twinkle effect it's definitely more of like that metallic finish and for me this will be like a great cheek all over color maybe over like a cream blush light shade like sandy cheeks here's genesis maybe genesis will take on a closer resemblance to fire opal this is like the coral base with the gold flip definitely definitely and here's fire opal right next to it so i don't know if you can detect but fire opal i think just has a, a shinier reflect if you can see it they are very similar, right, in terms of like the base and the flip, but there's definitely more of a twinkle present, I think, in House Labs. Shining a light over both, when I rotate my forearm, you can see they both had twinkle, but there is just a little more from the House Lab swatch. And of course, we have to go with the classic Divine Rose Glow Highlighter, the Skin Fetish Ultra Glow Highlighter. This is not gonna have the same twinkle as the house labs and this actually has a lighter pink base in the fire opal shade reintroducing the light more twinkle i think from the fire opal side and the divine rose shade i think serves more as a glow so maybe you prefer that finish over house labs you don't like to get into the twinkle inkle thing you like more of like a radiance luminosity i have the kaleido space age highlighter this is mars melter not quite the same formula this is i think a pressed powder formula here is the actual compact it has a similar vibe to fire opal but i don't think it's as smooth so here you go it definitely has that shine but i do prefer how the house labs formula blends on my skin and why not i thought we can go in with the power sculpt on the eyes this is something i like to do as a one and done step just for a quick makeup application and for the entirety of the look to appear comprehensive you don't have to put bronzer on your lids but if you like some color there then i think this is a great step to take so there you got a little warmth there on the eyes and you can proceed with mascara or even a liner on the lash line maybe punch in a little bit why not a fire opal actually let's take fire opal on the lid tap it across Ooh, that's pretty i didn't apply any primer so i expect this to break down uh quickly which is fine that's that's definitely on me i don't expect this to stay well on my oily lids without the appropriate prep and i'll go in with peach quartz on the inner part of my eye as i think that'll be a nice addition here 
for some highlight. You could apply this on the lids also if you don't want to go in with Fire Opal, if you happen to have it. Can't help myself in going in with past black coffee. I don't do this all the time, but there are moments where I just want a little more definition. And to quickly go over the entire brand's release, you got the Power Pigments, the Monster Crayon Lipstick, the Eco Gel Eyeliner Pencil, Highlighters, Bronzers, Lip Oil, and the Brow Pencil. I almost bought the Brow Pencil to try out. I'm still on the fence about it because, you know, Benefits Goof Proof 3.5 is like my ride or die right now, forever. So maybe eventually I'll decide to get House Labs Brow Pencil, but for now, I gotta stick to my Goof Proof. And I decided that I do prefer Goof Proof's pencil over Charlotte Tilbury's Brow Cheat in Natural Brown. I'd rather have a refill system like the one that's found in the uh, brow cheat line. I do think it's cheaper in buying just the refill and not the entire pencil each and every time when you run out. So I do wish Benefit implemented that system in their brow products as well because, you know, to keep buying a whole brow pencil each and every time, it's like, oh my gosh. Well, you never know. They did revamp their box blushes, which I did buy one of. I have the color Terra, which is just... I love it. What I thought strange, however, is they have Starla in the lineup, which is actually the one I had wanted originally, but it's sold out or like not in stock even on the benefits site. So I'm not entirely sure if that shade specifically has just not been manufactured yet or is delayed. I, I don't know what's going on, but as soon as it becomes available, I'm buying that as well. So that is it fam, my introduction to House Labs, the first time purchasing. Again, I only purchased three products, but I am very happy with the ones I chose. Head over heels for the bronzer and even more so for the highlighters. Again, just some considerations that the highlighters, as you saw, they do have a little bit of that sparkle effect that I think you can buff in well. But if you're not in to the super shiny then I get it right despite the fact that you might see more mature models on the swatches I think it looks beautiful on them also but your preference is your preference right I just want to put the information out there because if you're wondering about that and you prefer like a softer highlighter maybe like the Linda Helberg infinity glow highlighter Oregon Pat's divine glow highlighter I would say even Mario's highlighter is a great alternative it doesn't have that same twinkle effect but it does have the shine and is very smooth on the blue Blend. The highlighter, I do have to compare it again to LYS's matte bronzer highlighter, but the House Labs one is smoother. Again, it just has such a creaminess to it that I feel beautifully easy to apply on the skin, virtually foolproof, and I adore the fact the brand released 12 shades on the initial launch. Let me know what your experience has been with the bronzer because I know when it gets to the far ends of the spectrum, light and deep, depending on the undertones and how successful it is, it could be a different feedback altogether. So we'll love to know what you think. But if you're around my skin tone and you're wondering between six and seven, because I am getting a little more tan, I would go with seven, right? And these are permanent items. You know, if you want to get six down the road because you think it'll be a better match, great. I will probably just wait for a sale then because, you know, House Labs might throw 15 or 20% off. You know, you never know. I know it's down the road, but when we approach Black Friday, Friday, that might be a better sale than what Sephora might offer for the VIB Rouge event during the holidays. So just some things to consider if you're on a budget, you don't want to rush just yet, but you just want to check out some of the shades, see how they do, see how the textures perform. I will have this on for the next seven hours or so, so I'll be sure to check in in a pinned comment below. I'm not sure if it will be light enough for me to take some footage, but if it is, I'll be happy to do so and we'll add it to this video just so you can see the wear. Again, on this side, I have the light reflecting foundation from NARS and the blurring balm from Danessa. I think both setups are well for the bronzer, especially on the NARS side that I didn't set it. And if you're worried about that and you don't like to use setting powder because your skin is dry, then I don't think you'll have any issues with the Power Sculpt bronzer. That is it, fam. Let me know if you picked up anything from House Labs, what you think of the products, what you think about the brand, any of your recommendations recommendations or things you didn't like so much, please, I will see you down in those comments. And until then, fam, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. 
House Labs Extravaganza, or monthly faves. Take care, and I will see you again soon.